Well, again, welcome back to Sanford Flip Math. This is for AP Calculus. We're talking about continuity. And uh, just a reminder that uh, the overall concept of, of continuity is really about uh, how things, whether things are connected. Okay, so, so if a function is continuous, that uh, the rough idea means that it is continuous, uh, it is connected uh, everywhere. Okay, so uh, common examples might be like a parabola. Uh, there, you can draw the entire curve without picking up your pen, pencil, or whatever. Um, another example might be uh, a square root equation. Uh, it is connected everywhere. What's really kind of bizarre is there's kind of a little uh, biff here in the definition. Uh, I would not consider a hyperbola like this rectangular hyperbola uh, continuous. However, according to uh, the definition in your calc book, because this value, whatever that is, like maybe this might be y equals 1 over x minus 2 or something like that, at x equals 2, it's not part of the domain. So technically, it is continuous on the domain. It's just not continuous. It's continuous everywhere except there, but that's not part of except this spot. But it's, since that's not included in the domain, that's kind of a weirdness. So I, I, I don't want you to get caught up in that, but I do want to make that point. Okay. Um, let me get rid of that. There we go. So uh, the basic idea is connected. Uh, if it's connected, it is continuous. Now, I need to, with you, make sense out of this de definition, which comes from our calc book, which is, of course, the Finney, Demana, Waits, Kennedy calc book. And what this says is this limit has to equal the y value at whatever that x value is in order for it to be continuous at point C. Okay, so this is a, this definition is specifically about being continuous at a specific x value. Okay, so so please understand that's what this is about. Okay, so now just this statement alone is kind of loaded. Okay, so so worth noting that this limit has to exist. It has to have an answer. Okay, it has to have a number, and it has to be equal to the y value at c. And if all that happens, then that means it is continuous. Okay, so let's just kind of sketch a little graph here to make sense out of this. So this is going to be my little c value. And so this ordered pair is c, that's the x value, and the y value would be f of c. So this is just to illustrate the definition. Now remember, for this limit to exist, as x approaches c, now notice that that doesn't specify direction. So that means it's going to imply that it's from both directions. <coughs> okay. So if I can, if I go to c from the left, looks like it's going to whatever that y value is. If I go to c from the right it's going to that y value also. So the limit as x approaches c of f of x happens to be whatever that y value was. Well, so if that limit is equal to the actual y value that's there, notice it is filled in. If that's true, then it's continuous. And just conceptually, you can see that it's continuous there. Okay. All right, what I'd like to do is kind of pop over to another, so uh, this example, and just talk about where this thing is continuous for a second, and then I'll go back to the rest of the definition. Okay? So, uh, I want to know, is this function uh, continuous at x equals negative 2? Okay, so notice that the limit as x approaches negative 2 of this function well, from the left, it's going to 2. From the right, it's going to 2. What, what is f of negative 2? Well, that point actually is 2. Are those two equal? Yep. 
so it is continuous at x equals negative 2. Now the bigger question then is, where is this thing continuous overall? Okay, so it looks to me like I see stuff connected, 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 oh, not connected. Right, it goes all the way to that point, but then it magically jumps to here. Then it's connected, so it's, it's connected for those x values, it's connected for these x values, and it's connected for these x values. <coughs> so the question is, what are all those x values? <coughs> Sorry about the cough. Okay, now, I don't see anything that makes this thing stop here, so I'm going to assume it keeps going, and similarly on the right end. Okay, so I'm looking at, where is this continuous? Well, we established that it was continuous in this section of the graph. That, so that is continuous to the left of 0. Okay, so you could say x is less than 0. It's continuous there, or again, uh, in interval notation if you'd prefer. Well, it looks like it's continuous from 0 to 1. It's not continuous at 1 itself. Okay, so you could write that x uh, between 0 and 1. Or you can write it like this. Remember, that's not an ordered pair. That's a, an interval, and we, we know that by context. Okay? And it's also uh, continuous over here to the right of 1. Okay? And again, if you'd prefer, you can write that in interval notation. Now, just to make uh, a little connection here to the um, definition again. Okay, let's look at 1, at x, at x equals 1, that location. Okay, the limit as, oh, I'm sorry, as x approaches 1 of f of x, yeah, that's sloppy now, sorry. I'm approaching 1 from the left and approaching 1 from the right. I'm actually approaching the y value 1 also. f of 1 is negative 1, though. So note that these do not match, not equal. Okay, so uh, that limit does not equal the y value, so it does not match up with the definition. Okay, this definition says the limit has to be equal to the y value. Okay? All right, so that is where that thing is continuous. Okay, it's continuous uh, to the left of 0, between 0 and 1, and to the right of 0. Okay, I want to pop back. Okay, now the rest of this definition says stuff about at an endpoint. Now it says there's a left endpoint. If it if if you have a left endpoint, then this then it is continuous at that endpoint if this is true. Okay, so so here here's the picture. Uh, let, let's say we we you know I threw a little square root graph on here somewhere at one point. Okay, so let's say this is uh, f of x equals uh, the square root of uh, x plus 2. Okay, so th is this continuous? Well, conceptually it looks continuous because all of this stuff looks connected. The only issue is it, it, it starts here. That, that's, that's really the only issue is there's nothing to the left of it to connect to. Okay, so... Since there's nothing over here to connect to, can we just say, well, okay, that's not connected to anything, but the rest of it's connected. Okay, so that's, that's how we're going to look at this. What this part of the definition says is, is if I approach A, now, continuous at left endpoint A, so here is x equals A, so this point is A, f of A. That's the ordered pair right there. So the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x, well, in this case, it looks like 0, but it's f of a, whatever that is. It says it needs to be equal to whatever the y value is. Okay, so again, this is the y value. This is what the graph is approaching. So does it approach the actual y value for the function there. And, and in this case, 
Yes, it does. It, it, it's approaching, as I come in from the right, it's approaching the, the actual y value. So really all it's saying is I don't have to worry about from both ends, you know, I don't have to worry about approaching A from both sides because there's nothing on the other side. Okay, and similarly, okay, in, in the same way, if I had something that, that ended on the right end, okay, so it has a right end point of B, okay, so here, here's the X value B. Sorry, I don't want to make that a point. It's just a, a value on the graph. Okay, so this would be B, F of B. Okay, and again, same idea. As I approach from the left, does it approach the actual Y value? And yes, it does. Okay? All right, so that's what continuity means. That's what it's defined as in, uh, in calculus. Okay? All right. So, a uh, quick little reminder that there are some different types of discontinuities. Um, you've seen these before in pre-calc uh, and uh, when we did this in calc at the end of the year. Uh, this is an example of an infinite discontinuity. Sorry, D-I-S-C. Infinite discontinuity uh, when you have a vertical asymptote. Uh, worth noting that uh, this is also considered an infinite discontinuity. Okay. Um, point discontinuity is when you have a single point missing. Okay, so this is a point discontinuity. Uh, it is also referred to as a removable discontinuity. Okay. There is also something called a jump discontinuity. Uh, jump discontinuity, I'm going to make a little extra room up here. Jump discontinuity is uh, maybe something like this. Uh, it happens a lot with, when you're dealing with piecewise functions. Uh, you've also seen this with uh, step functions like greatest integer function. Um, there's nothing saying you have to step up. Um, you could step down. Okay, so you could be doing something like that. Okay, so those and there's one other discontinuity that is mentioned in the calc book that we really haven't done much with, and it comes up every so often, and that's uh, called an oscillating discontinuity. And it, it's basically um, when you don't really know what's going on. Okay, so I know, I know there's a break in here somewhere, and then it picks up again. But I, I can't really tell because of it oscillating. Oscillating has to do with uh, going around in a circle, actually. Uh, but, and if you graph the stuff related to that, it ends up, you know, like a sine graph-ish kind of thing. And, and so the, the question, I'm going to switch colors, sorry. The, the question is, what's going on there? And, and you can't really tell. Okay, so there's a discontinuity in there, but it's been oscillating right to that discontinuity. So we, we just don't know really what to do with it. So that, that's what that's about. Okay. All right. Uh, I think we did everything here. We didn't have any endpoints, so we're not so worried about that. Um, let, let's look at another function. So, uh, so the question uh, that I have here is where is this thing, f of x, so I guess I should call it f of x instead of y, where is f of x continuous? Okay, well, I did a little example that looked a lot like this already. Uh, half of a parabola. Uh, remember that normally if, if this wasn't here, if the plus 3 wasn't there, then uh, it would have started at 0, 0 uh, because of the plus 3 inside inverse. Uh, so we're going to go left 3. Uh, and it's going to look something like this. Okay, so where is this continuous? Well, again, it, this thing looks like it is connected everywhere that we see something graphed. So I, I would say it looks like it's continuous everywhere. But remember that this graph doesn't actually exist for all x values. There, there's, there's nothing over here at all. Okay, so the question then is, again, where is it continuous? Well, it looks like it's continuous starting from 3 and going to the right. Now, just a little clarification again. If I go back to that limit definition for continuous, for this endpoint, it has to be equal to 
whatever the y value is at that endpoint as we approach it from the right. Okay, so, so again, here's that idea. If I, uh, I'm really going to do the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right. Okay, so as I approach negative 3 from the right, okay, negative 3 from the right, not going to the right, but from the right, I'm approaching the y value 0. So then the question is, all right, well, what is f of negative 3? Well, negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So square root of 0 is, you guessed it, 0. So f of negative 3 is 0. That is equal to f of negative 3. Okay, so I've just used limits to show that it is continuous at negative 3. And now, for any other points, it, it would have to be continuous from both sides. So, for instance, if I go to x equals 1, set so the ordered pair 1, 2, okay, I just put 1 in, 1 plus 3, square root, uh, so square root of 4 is 2. I actually just did f of 1, okay, and then um, what I have to do is look at the limit. Well, as I approach the limit, uh, as I approach uh, x equals 1 from the right, and from the left, it does appear that I'm approaching 2. So because the limit as x approaches 1 actually equal, equals sorry, f of 1, then it is continuous at 1. Now that's just an example of a single point. Uh, we, we did one for the end point, and we did one for just one of the points on this graph also. Okay, So we used limits to show that. Okay, All right, I want to do one more. And that is uh, f of x equals 1 over x plus 2. Uh, a little bit of an asymptote action uh, kind of thing here. I don't know what's up with the negatives today, but apparently I'm going to... All the interesting stuff is happening on the left of my graphs. Uh, vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2, horizontal at y equals 0. And this graph will look roughly like that. And this is just a quick sketch. Okay, and so the question is, where is it continuous? Where is it connected? Well, it doesn't look like it's connect. Whoop, hello. It doesn't look like it's connected here. Looks like I have some kind of a discontinuity. And if you recall, if it has an asymptote, then that is an infinite discontinuity. There is an infinite discontinuity at x equals negative two. Uh, again, worth noting that for whatever reason, uh, we're gonna—it's a continuous function on its domain but not at x equals negative 2. Okay, so it is continuous everywhere else. So it is continuous for x not equal to negative 2. And for the sticklers among us, you could say the set of all x such that x is not equal to negative 2. I'm not that picky. Uh, and if you want to do interval notation, you can, but it's kind of a hoopla for no apparent reason. I mean, it's kind of overkill. Okay, well, that's continuity. Uh, and uh, we're good, and thank you for watching. Again, if you have questions, see me in class, and uh, we will talk more.